Today on Top Shelf Sports, we'll see what both the men's and women's tennis teams are serving up as their seasons begin to wind down, find out which Husky athlete is hitting home runs both on and off the field in this week's Leader of the Pack, and NIU cheerleader Reese Voitas joins us to talk about their experience at NCAA Nationals. Top Shelf Sports starts now. Welcome to this week's edition of Top Shell Sports. I'm Kobe Price. And I'm Brandon Giese. Kobe, it's so good to finally see you here at the desk with me. You know, Brandon, this is a lesson for all the kids out there. Work hard, eat your vegetables, listen to your parents, and you know what? You'll move up in life just like I did. You know, in inspiring stuff, Kobe Price. I know, I know. You know what's been inspiring? The men's tennis team, as they've been on a roll lately, they won their fourth straight contest, defeating Bingerton, him, Bobcat, Bearcats for its first fourth Mid-American Conference victory of the season last Sunday. Max Singles Player of the Week nominee, Luis Felipe Hamill, showed out in solo competition, winning his 12th duel for the season. The duo of Eric Marbach and Christopher Ortega were nominated for Max Doubles Team of the Week after their fourth conference match victory against the Bearcats. The Huskies will travel back to DeKalb to face off against the Toledo Rockets. First serve is at 1 p.m. After a quick start in the Missouri Invitational, the men's golf team underperformed in day two. Following the first day of action, the Huskies were in sixth out of 19 teams, led by redshirt senior Ju Young Lee and junior Thomas DeMarco. After weather delayed the start of day two, the Huskies had a rough outing in the third day of competition, finishing 12th out of the 19 teams. The team will head to Indiana for the Boilermaker Invitational on April 14th. The softball team is coming off a rough stretch of play as they've lost four consecutive games within the past week. The Huskies only lost those four games by a combined five runs, with two of those losses coming against the Ohio Bobcats last weekend, while the other two were against the Ball State Cardinals on Wednesday. The team will look to bounce back in a three-game series versus the Toledo Rockets this weekend. First pitch is today at 2 p.m. We are now joined by the sports editor for the Northern Star, Tom Burden. Tom, it's a pleasure to have you on set with us. Pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me on. So, first things first, the team was predicted in the preseason to win the MAC West, but currently set at 5-6 and six in the conference. What do you think has gone on with the team, and why have they haven't done as well as they predicted? Well, they're on a four-game losing streak after winning four games prior to that, and I think their biggest thing has been inconsistency, particularly hitting. They've actually dropped um, their last four games by a total of five runs, so I think the key is for them is to be just get those timely hits and come up late in ball games. So late ball games, that's a big topic of discussion. This team is three and 11 in games decided by three or fewer runs. What do they have to do to win those close games? Well, something interesting I found out is they're actually 45, they're being outscored 45 to 22 in the last two innings of the ball game. So I think, like I said, coming up with those late game hits are gonna be key. And obviously just the pitching, um, going a little bit deeper into the game. I know their arguable ace, Tara Thacker has not been strong as of late. She's given up, she gave up seven runs in her last game and last couple games she hasn't really been herself so I think that'll be key for them as well. We've talked a lot about their struggles. Can you tell us something positive about the team? Who's been your MVP and just give us a player or two who's really stood out in a positive way. Well you gotta love the play of uh, Jenny Van Geertree. Obviously she's hitting um, 429 in conference play this year and she's just been a leader for the team playing one of the arguably hardest positions on the field and also Sam Schmidt uh, 485 hitting in conference this year so she's been really well and in terms of who needs to improve I would say Jessica Rio what happened to Jessica Rio I mean last year she was one of the better players on the team hit over 300 and now she's hitting just over 100 and can't really find a spot on the field so hopefully they can get her going again so keeping all that stuff in mind they play the Mac leading Toledo Rockets this weekend that's actually going to start today uh, what does this team need to do to get back on the right track and maybe contend for the Mac West well, I think the biggest thing with playing a team like that would be obviously the pitching needs to go deeper than they've been and the bullpen needs to be consistent. And just generally the team needs to relax a little bit and just start getting back to the basics. I know uh, head coach Christina Sutcliffe said that's something they need to do is just relax, focus, and just play simple baseball again. Yeah, well, thanks for, having, or thanks for coming on set again, Tom. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us, Tom. And Always hopefully uh, softball will pick it back up starting tonight with the Rockets. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. thanks sir. The track and field team hit the road and traveled to Alabama last weekend looking for a strong outing in the Crimson Tide Invitational. Junior Giovanni White competed in the triple jump competition and led the way with scores of 11.98 and 12.38 meters, placing second. 
The team had a solid outing and will look to keep things going as they prepare to take on the Fighting Illini this Saturday. The competition is set to get, begin at 3 in Urbana-Champaign. It's been a rough season so far in the women's tennis team. The Huskies suffered their sixth straight loss against the Akron Zips on Saturday. Sophomore Brody Walker's five-match winning streak ended at the hands of Anna Ulyginov. And IU's last win was on March 15th. Huskies face Ball State in Muncie, Indiana, Sunday at noon. The women's golf team is back in action this weekend after nearly three weeks off, dating back to March 20, 27th at the Little Rock Invitational. The Huskies have three top five finishes this spring and will look to make it back for make it makes it four before the MAC championship next week. Players to look out for are freshman standout Lauren Engel and junior Brielle Ward. Tee off is set for Saturday and Sunday in West Lafayette, Indiana. The men's baseball team is in Kent, Ohio for a three game set with the Kent University. Kent State University coming off of two non-conference wins. The Huskies will look to take the leader in the MAC down. On Tuesday, Coach Kunagonis' team beat UIC 10-4, and on Wednesday, they took down Trinity 1-0. First pitch is set for 5 p.m. And we are now joined by our very own reporter, Martin Sotelo, and he's going to give us a little insight on what it takes to be a leader on the field for these guys. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks for joining us. Martin, what was it like to shadow a Husky? Yeah, I mean, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, it's been a unique experience learning about the student athletes and where they sort of come from. And, you know, we have so many of them from all over the nation. So it's really been an honor and a privilege to get to know them. So this week, I was able to see how senior outfielder Scooter Bynum maintains a positive outlook for his team. <laughs> Senior outfielder Scooter Bynum is a well-rounded player. He possesses all the skills, a good glove, speed, and arm, power, and contact, but this transfer student does much more for his team as he leads by example. Baseball is an individual action sport where a bunch of individuals come together as a team, so you want to be as best as you can be at your certain position, so that's what I just try to do. I just try to be as good as possible at my position just to help the team. And Scooter does help the team in many ways. He is always bringing a positive outlook to the field and keeping his teammates heads up. Coach Mike Kunagonis sees Scooter's impact on his team and realizes it's contagious. Yeah, I think he's been a guy that's been leading by example. You know, he's not the, uh, the guy that's going to tell somebody to go and, hey, you go do this, you go do that. He's leading from the front of the pack. Scooter knows his role very well. He recognizes how his positive attitude impacts his team as much more than any skill ever could. And as a senior, he knows his time is limited, but he wants to keep impacting this team long after he is gone. People remember me as a guy who tried to make everybody else better, you know what I mean? Just negative, nothing negative about me. You want to be as positive as possible. I'm a, I'm a big positive energy guy. Scooter's positive outlook and all-around skill leaves him as this week's leader of the pack. Scooter's looking forward to leading his team to a successful rest of the season and is hoping his baseball career continues after he leaves NIU. After the break, NIU cheer team made history in Daytona. We'll tell you why this accomplishment feels bittersweet. The athletics department is set for their premier fundraising event with some special guests. We'll tell you who is expected to attend. And the Chicago Sky had both the third and fourth picks in last night's WNBA draft. Find out who they added to their team. Stay with us. You've messed up your son's haircut. Do you try to fix it? Work with what you've got? Or show solidarity? Thank you, babe. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. I'm Ferdinand. You look at me and think big. You think scary. But I'm a little misunderstood. Sorry I almost killed you! Kids with learning and attention issues are misunderstood too. Take the time to understand. Learn more at understood.org. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really like cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope we don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Papa! <laughs> <laughs>
It's one year after being cut from NIU Athletics, the cheerleading squad ranks among the best in the nation. NIU Cheer brought home a second place trophy at the NCAA Championships in Daytona, Florida. This is a school first and serves as a redemption for the sport. The team had to rebuild themselves as a club after losing school funding and had to find a new coach to be eligible to compete. Despite being cut by NIU Athletics, the cheer team has powered through to make history this past weekend, Kobe. Our reporter Bear Garcia got the chance to sit down with senior Reese, Reese Voitas. Thanks guys, I'm here with Reese Voitas, Public Relations Manager for the NIU Cheerleading Team. Hi Reese. Hi. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so I know that in the last year, uh, the cheerleading team has gotten cut from NIU funding. Uh, being that you're a senior and you've been on the team for four years, uh, what has it been like going from being funded by the athletic program to being cut? Well, it's definitely been a lot different. It's been a 180 because they did give us some money to have Adidas gear. So now that we are a club and under student association, all of the money that we need to have to pay for things and to get things, it comes from us. It comes from all of our fundraising that we have to do. Um, what are some kind of fundraisers that you guys do? Like how, how much effort do you guys have to put in to raise that money to be able to go on trips like Daytona? We put a lot of effort and we find um, competition organizations to work competitions for them and they'll pay us to do the dirty work there and we've done t-shirt fundraisers and a sponsor t-shirt fundraiser and a Krispy Kreme donut fundraiser and many more. <laughs> um, what has it been like overcoming the obstacle of being cut by NIU funding and now placing second in the NCAA championship in Daytona? It's, it's been the best feeling that I could have ever imagined and asked for, especially being with all the those teammates were rough and everyone these athletes, else that's worked so hard. They never gave up on the we're program. all so proud of how far we've not come, especially knowing bring them down. the mountains that we've had to push through and get over to be where we are today. We're all very grateful and we're all so proud of all the hard work that we've put in. Um, what do you think is next for the cheerleading team? I think the top is where they're headed. I think if they stay in the division that we're in, they're going to kick some butt and I'm so excited to see where they're headed. It seems like you guys have used all of the struggles as motivation to yeah. come back on top. Yeah, we really have. We never looked at it in a negative light or that someone wanted to do something intentionally to make things more difficult. We only use it as a reminder of, hey, let's, let's show them how good we are and how good we can do and how well we can represent our university. Well, that's great. Thanks so much for being with us, Reese. Yeah, thank you. Let's send it back to you guys. Athletics is set to host their third annual Victor E. Ball and hopes to continue to raise money for the program. The event will include a panel discussion with Bears legend Dan Hampton, former Chicago Cub Bill Buckner, and former NBA champion with the Chicago Bulls Bill Wennington. The event holds silent and live auctions to hope to generate revenue to fund student-athlete scholarships. Director of Athletics Sean T. Frazier said community participation is encouraged and important for the program. It's a great event. You know, when we talked about doing this event uh, in the past, and the real, the real highlight here is highlighting the student athlete experience. You know, student athletes, uh, we have some video components, we have some live components, and it's really putting a face on athletic fundraising uh, and NIU and NIU athletics. Kobe, let me ask you, did you catch WrestleMania this year? Oh, my bad, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, I caught a little bit of it, saw some matches, you know, dab a little bit. What about you? I watched the entire thing, minute to, like, start to end, minute, every minute of it. Wow, um, that's impressive. Okay, well, um, Top Show Sports reporter Mike Mitchell will update us on all 420 minutes of WrestleMania and then mix in a little bit of national sports in this week's sports talk. Spring, spring, spring. Spring is finally here. And I don't know about you, but wait, that music can only mean one thing, WrestleMania. Sunday, WrestleMania did not let down. In a match for the ages, John Cena took on the retired Undertaker in a one-off match, and it was all Undertaker. With his signature tombstone, the Undertaker took the W in under three minutes. Another notable match in this was Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey capped off her first WrestleMania 
with a W. A WWE WrestleMania to remember, to say the least. Off to the diamond we go, the Cubs once again struggled. In the first, Gregory Polanco hit one of not just one, but two home runs as Cubs pitcher Justin Wilson struggled mightily. Cubs fall 6-1. They're going to look to get back on track today as they take on the Braves in about an hour. You Darvish is on the mound for his first start in front of the Wrigley Faithful. Up to Minnesota we go as the Sox took on the Twins. The game was all Jose Barrios. Barrios struck out 11 Sox over 7 innings. In the 7th, Joe Maurer adds his Hall of Fame career with number 2,000 hits. Congrats, Joe. Sox fall 4 0. Fight! Wednesday was fight night in baseball. First in the afternoon with Rockies, Nolan Arenado was on a mission to KO the Padres pitcher. And the nightcap, Red Sox and Yankees, sure to disappoint. Joe Kelly throws in on Tyler Austin, and it is on. A full out East Coast brawl. Look at Kelly holding his own there. Talk about a way of, you know, showing off your Conor McGregor. WNBA draft is in full swing down the season began last night. Aja Wilson was taken first overall by the Las Vegas Aces after being a three-time SEC Player of the Year at South Carolina. Chicago selected Tennessee guard Diamond Shields and UConn forward Gabby Williams with the third and fourth overall selections. Local sensation Amara Coleman out of DePaul was taken with the Sky's 28th overall pick. Coleman has some experience playing around the Sky's home court, Wintrust Arena, as DePaul plays at the same venue. The regular season tips off May 19 as the Sky take on the Indiana Fever. The Blackhawks finish off what can only be described as a horrible season Tuesday night against the Winnipeg Jets. We pick it up in the second already, Hawks are down 3-0. While on the power play, they give up the puck and Andrew Kopp puts in another goal, his second of the game for the Jets. The only bright spot of the game was Brent Seabrook for the Hawks as he fired a slap shot past the Jets defender. With Corey Crawford on the horizon, I'd hope to return. I guess the Hawks should just put the season behind them and hope, hey, next year will be better. The Bulls hosted the Pistons for their final regular season matchup, and the game was much like the rest of the season. They lost 119-87. to There's a bright spot in the Bulls season, Laurie Markkinen. would set a Bulls rookie record, breaking his three-point stretch of one Kirk Heinrich, who had 144 threes in his first rookie year. With the Bulls' 27-55 and record, this was ironically their worst record since Kirk Heinrich's rookie season in 2003. They lock up the 7th overall pick in the draft, and many believe they are going to take a forward out of Duke by the name of Marvin Badley. Maybe he'll turn some things around. That's all for Sports Hub. I don't know about you, but it's 70 degrees. I'm going outside. I'm Mike Mitchell. Now let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, Mike. When we come back, Top Show Sports reporter Scott Nickel will update you on the waiver wire happenings in fantasy baseball. And we've narrowed it down to five. The top plays of the week are ones you can't miss. Stay with us. What? <laughs> These are cool. Did you, um, what did I understand. I know it's not your typical resume. Okay, well. But candidate. But I've been working double shifts just to pay for books. I've been raising my two little brothers. I'm determined, driven, motivated. Isn't that what you're looking for? Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org. Drop that baby. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Starting to get. The MLB is starting to get into a rhythm here despite Mother Nature's best efforts. Yeah, the extra days off have made for a funky beginning of the season, that's for sure. But players are starting to heat up and so is the weather. Scott Nickel is here to let you in on the secrets of the mysterious waiver wire. That's right. 
The waiver wire certainly is a mystery, but there are plenty of guys starting or er, getting off to a hot start. Leading us off, we have utility infielder Yangaris Solarte from the Toronto Blue Jays. Solarte is coming off a 7 for 18 week where he also walked seven times, scored four runs, and hit a home run. Solarte is eligible at shortstop, third, and second base. And with Toronto's early injury problems to Troy Tulowitzki, he should get a solid amount of playing time. He's owned in 44% of Yahoo leagues, but has been added in 12% of leagues since Wednesday, so you gotta grab him quick. Next, I, next guy to look out for, we have outfielder Max Kepler. Kepler was solid last year, but struggled mightily against lefties, hitting just two of his 19 home runs against them. But since he's only owned in 28% of Yahoo leagues, he's worth the pickup, especially since he's gotten off to a pretty hot start with a slash line of 273. If you're like me and decided that no relief pitching could get you by, then you are currently scrounging the waiver wire for help like a child searching through an empty cookie jar. I don't have any cookies, but I do have a closer for you to scoop up. Joaquim Soria. Owned in just 30% of Yahoo leagues, Soria is a veteran relief pitcher who has lost velocity on his stuff in recent years, but is still very effective and has two saves so far this year for the Chicago White Sox. The Sox don't look to be very competitive in 2018, so look for a lot of close games, opening the door for Soria to eat up some innings. Jolie Lucchese is the starting pitcher you want to snag on the waiver wire this week. He's gotten off to a torrid start to 2018, where he's posting a 1-0 record with 16 strikeouts and 15 and two-thirds innings pitched, while boasting a 1.72 ERA. The catch-22 situation with Lucchese is that he plays for the San Diego Padres. Meaning his home ballpark is very pitcher friendly, but also he won't be in line to get a ton of wins as the Padres are projecting as bottom dwellers in the competitive NL West. And for my sleeper of the week, make sure to take a good look at Cincinnati Reds third base pro prospect, Nick Senzel. Senzel has not been called up from AAA yet, but with current third baseman Eugenio Suarez out indefinitely after fracturing his thumb, it won't be long before the former second overall pick in the 2016 draft will be called up. Senzel is the number seven ranked prospect by Baseball America coming into this season and hit 321 with 14 home runs, 65 RBIs, and 14 stolen bases between high single A and double A last season. Well, that's all I got for you guys this week. Hopefully I help your team out, but remember, we're only a week into the season and it's a marathon, not a sprint. Now, back to the guys sitting in chairs talking about sports. Brandon, Brandon, it's time for the MMA update from the man who breaks all the rules. Yeah, Kobe, no law can hold him. No law can bind him. It's the outlaw, David Craighead. Thanks, friends. I'm the outlaw, David Craighead, and this is your MMA update. First, we get into the nitty t gritty on the Dustin Poirier and Justin Gaethy fight. Then we will take the temperature of the current MMA scene as a whole after the Conor McGregor fiasco. Justin Gaethy is coming off a loss and is looking to set his record straight with the win in the Saturday night cage. Gaethy is going up against the Lafayette, Louisiana native, Dustin Poirier. Poirier is coming off a TKO fight of the night. Gaethy likes to wrestle and Poirier likes to brawl. The odds of the fight are negative 135 for Poirier and plus 125 for Gaethy. This cowboy is putting his money on a Poirier win by TKO. Over the past week, the MMA world was shaken by the notorious Conor McGregor's actions at Barclays Stadium. Conor McGregor hurled a chair at a bus full of fighters. As demonstrated here by Crystal Lake native Felice Herrig's Instagram, Joe Rogan called Connors McGregor's actions shameful. Top shelf sports zone Eddie Garcia has called out the UFC in a conspiracy theory twist on the event. The theory claims that the UFC staged the rampage in Barclay to promote itself along with Connor McGregor. Adding fuel to the conspiracy's fire, the UFC will not be suing McGregor for the attack. And Dana White has said he thinks there's a mutual respect between the two of them. Let us know what you think about the conspiracy on Twitter. It's a conspiracy the outlaw can get behind and does get behind. 
Back to my co-conspirators at the desk. Well, doddle do, doddle dee, that's an MMA update for me. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Brandon. Took the words right out of my mouth. And speaking of words, it's time for one of my favorite parts of the show that I'm excited to finally be able to be part of again. It's the top five. It's the top five. Well, Kobe, since it's been a while, I'll take the lead on this one. Go ahead. She's a beauty, that number five. Take a look at this, of Dubal Herrera. He's going to track this one in the Philadelphia night. Off the bat of Scooter Jeanette, perfect timing. Hits the wall, hangs on, robs the homer. Take another look. Herrera selling out for his team in this one. Philly wins 4-3. to three. That's impressive. Wow. Can't see how I can follow that one up, but at number four, we have Memphis Grizzlies doing their best Harlem Globetrotter impression as they get the ball up the floor without a single dribble for sensational Thomas Bryant throw down alley-oop. Brandon. I don't even know what to say about that one. That's, that's yeah, crazy, that's man. pretty impressive there. Well, I don't know how to follow that up, but we'll go to number three. Rondo is running the break after a blocked shot here, and you know he's passing right away. Alley oop off the board to Anthony Davis. Let's take another peek at that. Full extension from Davis, and he makes it look so easy. The Pelicans knock off the Clippers 113 to 110. Showtime in the Staples Center for number two, future Hall of Famer Chris Paul. Nutmegs Lakers center Ivan Zubak into a near early retirement. For all the big men out there, remember, stay low and think agile. Man, he needed some help. But the number one play of the week, it's going to be Sendarius Thornwell. Look, he's going to bring the ball up, give it up. He'll get it right back. A stutter step, and he's going to put DeAndre Liggins in the coffin. An absolute poster, Kobe. What do you think about that one? That is, uh, that, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Liggins, you, I don't know what to say right now about you, but you know, Rob Perez, of World, or Worldwide Rob, if you're a yeah. big Twitter NBA addict, he has a great idea. He thinks he thinks Ligon should just give up his spot to Thornwell, his playoff spot with the Pelicans. You know, at this point, great idea. When you get dunked on like that, it's over. How can you make another appearance in the NBA after that? I, I'd be embarrassed. Don't know. Can't tell you. Top Shelf Sports is produced and directed by students here at Northern Illinois University. For more on Top Shelf Sports, look us up on Facebook and be on the lookout for our various podcasts on SoundCloud. You can also check us out on our Twitter, top shelf underscore NIU for latest sports. You got a shout out for somebody? You know what? Shout out to Crystal Megan for running the best social media account in all of student sports broadcast. She's sensational. She keeps us up and running, that's for sure, on Twitter. We want to thank you all for joining us. And as always, go Huskies.